Hello investors and welcome back to Just Running Stocks. I want to talk about why Sensionix hasn't gotten that FDA approval we expected it about a week or two ago, definitely before Christmas and now this far into December. It's more than likely going to come out in Q1 of 2022. Now I do still expect FDA approval. It's just not going to happen yet. So should you buy more at what price and what risk is there to holding this long term? We're going to talk about all that during this video. So on December 21st, ever since now, remote monitoring app, they come out with this for the Android users in Europe. This is supposed to be available first quarter of 2022, available on the Google Play Store. Now I mentioned this because this could be a key performance indicator or a KPI that you want to monitor and track for this company. So if you're following the growth story, you understand that this was first generation, 90 day, this is second generation, 180 day, and then they're trying to develop a 365 day, then you're following the growth story. 180 day system is already available in the UK, so we wanna track and monitor how many downloads this gets. Is it popular with family and friends wanting to share this? So just monitor those downloads. I think this could be a key performance indicator that could be interesting to see that further adoption. Now let's go through the charts. Some of you might be asking yourselves, is this gonna present another buying opportunity? Because I still believe that this is gonna get FDA approval. I think that this came up here and it tested some resistance when it, it crossed over the RSI, just barely touched it. You could see back here in the beginning of December, it did the same thing. It came down, found support around 250. Uh, to be more specific, I would say 259 exactly. That's where it found support. Of course, it did, it did touch 250, 251, and I believe that it will definitely retrace and test that once more. So if I was to add and you were thinking about adding to your position, I would definitely see if it holds support here and I would let it run back up. I would see that it, it tests support again or does it drop further down? Let's talk about volume. So when this does get FDA approval, and I still believe it will, no matter what the delay is, and I've got my speculation as to what the delay is. We'll talk about that in just a moment. This is going to run and it's going to have some crazy volume that I think is going to revisit the levels that we've seen in June 4th and June 11th and 14th. You can see it was up here 220 million, 177 million. And if you scroll forward to current day, the average trading volume for this is around 8 million. And you can see it's been sitting well below that as of the last week. So down here in the 250 mark, that's when it doubled the average trading volume. But people have kind of stepped back from this. The people that own it are holding, they're waiting. I don't see there being a lot of downward pressure on the stock. I believe a lot of people have bought and held. I don't see this going too far below 250, but I could totally be wrong. I would definitely watch those levels and key support levels. What happens to this after it revisits 250. I'm going to be watching this a lot closer. So I would expect you could get some kind of update from the company on their next earnings, which Earnings Whisper is projecting Tuesday, February 8th at 4.05 p.m. Now, of course, this will come out in official press release, so you don't have to guess, but this does give you some idea. If this doesn't get approved in January, you should hear something from the company in the next earnings call. Now, let me tell you why I believe this was delayed. And MedPage today gives you a good summary of the last clinical trial and the number of participants and their makeup. And 90% were white. And through reading some of the clinical trials on clinicaltrial.gov and the sustains and the improvements, race does matter. And I believe they got a sustainment for accuracy, an improvement on their use of a diverse makeup of candidates. So they may have had to answer back in December on the diversification, how they were going to open this up to future clinical trials. So after they get approval, they will have to include more of a makeup of Pacific Islanders, Indian Americans, African Americans, Asian Americans, Korean Americans, because this race does matter in diabetes. And you, you may not know that your chances of having diabetes go up 
if you're overweight, don't exercise, have high blood pressure. But did you know that your odds can also be tied to your race, ethnicity, and this has to do with genetics? But the biggest thing here is, yes, it could have been delayed because FDA resources got pulled to work on COVID-related uh, tasks, so staffing issues for the FDA. But I believe that race had something to do with, and the company could have done a better job of diversifying their candidates. Now, it's obviously smart not to diversify too much because if you want to have a controlled outcome on anything you're trying to measure, you don't want to have your you know, your population skewed all over the place. So I understand why they did it. I think that that could be why there's a delay. I went through and looked more into what the manufacturer and user facility device experiences were, the complaints basically for the last month or two, just to see what's getting reported into the system. I think it's important to be aware of those uh, just as a long-term hold I think those are important to look at because is really going underneath the skin, pricking the skin, drawing blood, is that really the future of diabetes and isn't it to actually cure diabetes? And some people even joked that by this time <laughs> we're working on getting FDA approval. They're going to have a cure for it by now. I don't think that's a joke. I think that that is in the, the future, maybe five, 10 years from now. But sooner than that, I believe that there could be a device in the making, graphware, monitor your glucose without breaking the skin. I think that this is a very interesting company to look at. I'm going to keep this short, but TechCrunch does do an article on this. So graphware closes 20.5 million B-series for a needle-free nanotech-powered glucose monitor October 4th, 2021. Not sure if it's accurate, completely accurate, what the accuracy is. It's got a watch. It does have the ability to have a patch so you can wear this on your abdomen. It is a thin slice of graphene, and that fits onto the back of the watch or the sticker that can be wore on the, worn on the stomach. And one of the board of directors made a quote in here that the Holy Grail is really getting rid of the whole problem of taking blood, pricking, or putting anything into the skin. And I believe that that would be the holy grail. I believe that's what you look forward to uh, with either curing diabetes or getting away from having to prick or draw blood at all or stick anything into the skin. Now, Graphware has already completed one feasibility study for the wearable sensor on 40 patients with uh, both with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and the results have not yet been released. So this is still upcoming, you know, everything on the website. It does have this caution down here. It says caution, investigational device limited by US, United States law to investigate use. So this isn't real yet, but I would tell you that while Sensionics is a good short-term play, I don't know that this is a good long-term play. So I'm talking about long-term meaning three to five years or three to 10 years. So take advantage of this opportunity. I think in the short term, this is a great play, but I don't believe going into the skin is the future for diabetes. Let me know what your comments are in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.